Thank you. Uh, further debate, the member for Simcoe Gray. Uh, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I rise today to uh, talk about the programming motion that's just been introduced by the government House Leader. Uh, since becoming House Leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, I've learned, especially in a minority parliament, that in order to make it work, you have to talk to your counterparts on the other side of the aisle, and that's not happening, Madam Speaker. Now, I just want to say, while he's chirping up there, that I enjoy working with Mr. Malloy, the government House Leader. Very He's a much more affable fellow and house leader than the previous one, I can tell you that. There you go. And I enjoy working with the house leader of the NDP, uh, Gilles Bisson, the member from Northern Ontario, uh, is, a, is a, a terrific fellow and, uh, and uh, enjoyable to talk to, and uh, uh, I don't mind buying him a, a beer once in a while and having a chat with him. But again, they have to talk to us, not have secret talks amongst themselves which lead to today's programming motion, and then go out in the hallway, as the government house leader did a few hours ago in a scrum, and indicate that the PCs are holding everything up and that we're not cooperating. Well, cooperation is a two-way street, and you haven't talked to us about this motion, and you haven't talked to us about our ideas around the budget, that was clear, and you haven't talked about with us in any way about moving forward in this legislature since I've been house leader. When Dalton McGuinney prorogued this House back in October 2012 to escape further scrutiny, took off with his tail between his legs to save what was left of his party and his own reputation. And uh, he, he clearly, the main issue at the time was he was afraid to be accountable for the gas plant scandal, for Orange, for eHealth, and on and on and on. The Liberals took an unprecedented, four-month soul-searching journey to find themselves a new leader. Unprecedented. Shame. Closed the place down for four months. I've never seen that in my 23 years. There's nothing in the history or the annals of this place uh, to indicate that that ever happened before. To do such a selfish act, to close this place down so the party could, as he said, lower the conversation, lower the tone. Uh, to run away, uh, scared to face the accountability of, of this legislature, is shameful. And I tell you, for you to expect us to come back here in a minority government after proroguing for four months and just blanketly say yes to everything you asked for and vote on everything you asked for, that may be the NDP's way of propping up a government that's been more than honest with the people of Ontario, a scandal-plagued government. But it's not our way. And my constituents told me, I can remember standing in the grocery store in Wasaga Beach, and two people, two couples, coming up to me and saying, when you go back, and this was at Christmas time, when you go back, don't reward bad behavior. It's disgusting what Dalton McGiddy did in October of last year. So, so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as we debate every bill and every motion on this side of the House, which is our right to do. One thing I note about Premier Wynn is her love for conversations. We hear that all the time. She acknowledged that her predecessor, Dalton McGuinty, seemed to rule autocratically, and she promised to be different. She promised to engage, to converse, and to listen, and to stop the chest pounding here in the legislature. Speaker, I was somewhat impressed, and I think people of Ontario were impressed, that things might be different. I figured the House leader stonewalling that I had experienced under Dalton McGuinty might come to an end. Remember, since the 2011 election, they still haven't figured out it's a minority government. You have to talk to all parties in the House. You have to make deals, as it were, to get things through. And you actually have to come and ask us, what do we need to better serve the people of Ontario? What do we need? Like, for example, I'm sitting here with a member for Leeds Grenville who has a perfectly good bill that would serve the people of Ontario tremendously well. It would serve medical professions, the dental professions, uh, and allow them to treat their spouses and their families and not be illegal, especially in rural, remote parts of the province where may, they may be the only practitioner in town. That's a perfectly good bill. Or we have a motion on the table that was passed on May 16th here in this legislature by all three parties, um, a passed motion from the member from Whitby, Oshawa. Christine Elliott, that calls upon establishing, calls upon this place to establish an all-party select committee.
to look into developmental services in the province of Ontario. We all agreed on it. Do you think, Mr. Malloy, the government house leader, has come over and said, Jim, if we helped you out establish that select committee, would you speed up the budget debate a little bit? And you know, we're willing to talk about that. If you want to talk about Mr. Clark's bill that's on the table and it's all ready to go, we're happy to talk about that. Um, there's a number of things that I'll get to at near the end of my remarks that we're happy to talk about that Mr. Malloy knows about. So don't be fooled, folks, that they're talking to us. They're not talking to us. So we still see no reason at this time to step back and let you two have your way. We have a right to debate. We will take that right and we'll debate till the cows come home if that's yeah. what you want. <clears throat> so back to Premier Wynne and her conversations. I thought, as I said, that the stonewalling and the autocratic rule of Premier Dalton McGuinty would come to an end, perhaps, with the rhetoric I was hearing. It turned out to be rhetoric from Premier Wynne because at the House Leader's level, nothing has changed. There's no new government. There's no new approach to dealing with Her Majesty's loyal official opposition. Nothing has changed. So uh, proof is in the pudding. She was having conversations, though. Uh, everywhere you tune, Premier Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals seem to be in deep conversations, Madam Speaker. She had conversations with her leadership rivals. She tried to convince Sandra Pupatello to become finance minister, but instead opted for second best. After demoting the only Liberal minister who had held the line on freezing wages to the intergovernmental affairs portfolio, Premier Wynne had, Wynne had conversations with teachers. Those conversations must have gone well because hundreds of millions of dollars later, the love of teachers was bought again as the Liberals retreated uh, from their very own Bill 115. Then the Liberals had conversations with LCBO workers to give them more money. Then the Liberals had conversations with Pat Dillon and the Working, Family, Working Families Coalition to no doubt assure their union buddies that all is good and well with the Liberals and we really haven't changed, folks. We just use that in our speeches and we just use that in our emails and we just use that in the titles of our press releases. But nothing's changed, Mr. Dillon. All's good and well. We're still with you. And by the way, could you please once again spend up to $10 million trying to defeat Tim Hudak and the Ontario PCs through your advertising campaigns on TV, which, Madam Speaker, any human being on this planet knows is unfair. That's more than the NDP spent in their entire advertising budget in the last campaign. I think it's more than spent in the entire campaign. And we have these third-party interest groups, which are, are illegal federally. We've asked the government to do something about that. Mr. Hudak, leader of our party, has sat down with Ms. Wynne, the Premier, and asked specifically that that be dealt with in a fair manner. That's been rejected, of course, by the government. Um, there were conversations between the, the Premier Wynne and the Liberals and OPSU, and again, likely for more money, but we're just not sure of the details of all of those conversations. Then came the conversations with the NDP. That is where the NDP sold their souls, I regrettably say. When the Liberals dropped a billion dollars cancelling the gas plants in Mississauga and Oakville to save five Liberal seats, that was $200 million to save their political skins. So $200 million per seat is a billion dollars. But the NDP sold out on this budget deal and this programming motion we have before us for a few trinkets in the budget, more spending, more waste, adding to our debt, as we say, a, a, a daughter born tomorrow uh, has $20,000 on her back, worse than California, worse than any province, uh, California being the most indebted state in the United States, worse than any province in Canada. We're heading towards Greece, folks, and you heard it here first from the PC party. Of course, the Liberals have promptly agreed to every demand in order to cling to power, every NDP demand there was. So, Speaker, the conversations with the NDP must have gone really well. We were shut out of the process. Fine. It's not what you say in the hallways, but that is the truth. Because the NDP was convinced to sell their 18 seats for only $55.5 million per seat. Quite a bargain for the uh, in comparison to, to the Liberals. Well, shame on the NDP. Shame on the NDP for selling themselves so cheaply. But I digress, Madam Speaker. Back to the issue at hand, this, this programming motion. For all the conversations the Liberals have had, 
for all the claims of Premier Wynne to want to make this legislature work. The one party and the one group, and I repeat, that the Liberals have not talked to is the official opposition. Sure, the Liberals will say, well, the Tories said they would oppose the budget. That is true. Given the throne speech of Premier Wynne, it was clear from day one of the new Liberal government that it was not new at all. It was clear that Premier Wynne would continue on the same reckless path of overspending and debt as Premier McGuinty. It was clear from day one that Premier Wynne was not going to follow the advice of Liberal-appointed Don Drummond. That all said, Madam Speaker, I was certain that my good friend and colleague across the way, the Government House Leader, Mr. Malloy, would reach out to me as opposition House Leader, official opposition House Leader at some point. While we've not always agreed, I figured, per the tradition of this, this, this place, and despite our decision to not support the Liberal NDP budget, as always the case, is the case, at the end of the spring session, the official opposition was willing to work with the government to get things through the House in the best interest of Ontarians. But did the government reach out to the PCs to try and have a conversation? Did the government reach out to the PCs to try and get the Cooperative Housing Act passed, which they have promised to stakeholders? No. 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 No such conversation. The Liberals are silent. Did the government reach out to the PCs to try and get the Court Security Act passed? No. No such conversation. Again, the Liberals are silent. Did the government reach out to the Progressive Conservatives to try and get the F Local Food Act passed? Remind you, Madam Speaker, the Local Food Act, the pre Premier's signature bill in her dual role as Minister of Agriculture and Food, we are told is very important to the Premier, the part-time Minister, I should say, of Agriculture and Food. We're told it's very important to her personally. And she would like to get it through this session. So you would think that the Liberals would want this act to pass to help Ontario farmers. We're prepared to pass it with some minor amendments proposed by my friend here from Sarnia-Lampton. But nope, no such conversation or outreach by the li governing Liberals. Did the Liberals try and reach out to the Progressive Conservatives to try and get the Select Committee struck into developmental services put forward in a motion passed on May 16th by my colleague Christine Elliott from Whitby, Oshawa, which her own members, again, all parties support and the NDP supported. Nope. No conversations there either. Did the Liberals try and reach out to the PCs to try and get the John Paul II bill passed? Again, a bill we've all agreed should go through. Once again, no conversation either. As we draw to the end of a long session, there are often divisions about getting the House to rise on time to ensure no bell ringing, ringing and to limit night or midnight sittings. Well, guess what, Mr. Speaker, or Madam Speaker, sorry? No conversation there either. Now, you might say, as I've said before, conversations are a two-way street, or at least I always thought the word meant. The two of you were talking, at least two of you, and my family of seven, there were usually seven talking at once, and we called that a conversation, but I digress. So should, uh, shouldn't the PCs try and have such conversations? Well, Mr. Speaker, we've tried, but we've met with a closed door. So what are we left to do? Well, we're left with few options, but to remind this government they do not have a majority and stop acting like you have a majority. We're left with few options, but to remind this government that they do not have a majority and this is a minority parliament not one of their making, I'm sure. They would have liked it to go another way, as we would have liked it to go another way. But the making of the people of Ontario, the wishes of the people of Ontario, the electorate has spoken. And yes, we should try and make this place work. But again, conversations are needed. Of the 13 bills the government has on the order paper, which might, I might add is a pathetic legislative agenda, you would think that the five of the 13 that are Dalton McGuinty retreads, the government would want cleared. You would think that the five other bills that are new to the Wynn government, they would want those passed also. I think they want these bills, but I don't know because, once again, 
No one is talking to us about these bills from the Liberals. They do their talking through the media and in the hallway. Well, ignore us at your peril, is what I say to the Liberals. We have a strong caucus, a determined caucus, an experienced caucus, a caucus that has shown you every step of the way since you arrogantly started running this place after the 2011 election in a minority parliament. Your approach has been arrogant, and we have tried, yes, to thwart you at every step by having us debate every bill, and we'll continue to do that until you have a conversation with us directly. There are some very simple things that we are asking for, like the Select Committee, uh, like Mr. Clark's bill. Uh, we even have a First Responders Act that everybody agrees with, put forward by the member from Newmarket, Aurora, that we're happy to, uh, to, to discuss with you. Uh, we have Mr. Hardiman's bill, um, which Mr. Clark, Oxford, the member for Oxford, uh, dealing with CO2, which was part of an agreement that you've yet to live up to. I'll give you one thing. Before prorogation, we did have an all-party agreement, by the way, by unanimous, unanimous consent, so it's not like we're stuck in the mud and don't do this. We've shown you last year that we're quite capable of a programming motion that we all agree on that gets us out of here without bell ringing and nonsense uh, or, or uh, no, you know, things that border to be unparliamentary, but you drive people to that because you can do not talk to them and do not have the conversation. We um, are quite capable of doing uh, unanimous consent programming motions. We proved it. And I, as I go back, I'll give you credit. Uh, Mr. Bailey, the member for uh, Sarnia Lambton, his uh, call before you dig, one, one, call, one, call. one call act, uh, went through. Good bill. But there were two more as part of that deal. And, and they were Mr. Clark's and uh, 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 the member Mr. for Leeds Granville and Mr. Mr. Hardiman, the member for Oxford. I'm trying to be very parliamentary today by remembering their writing names, too, so right here. just so you don't have to uh, get too upset at me, Madam Speaker. And one call was done. So obviously you're capable of living up to one-third of three bill agreement. So we'd just like to talk to you about living up to the rest of it. And it can't be one-sided. It can't be, you know, we want you to do this programming motion. We want out of here June 6. We don't want night sittings. We want the Local Food Act. We want the Cooperative Housing Act. We want the Court Security Act. Uh, we want the Highway Track Amendment uh, for Municipalities to Collect Fees Act. Uh, but never ask us, well, what do you want? And we're not asking for... Uh, mm. Yeah, it's not rocket scientists. I wish <laughs> Mr. Delaney was here. Um, from the member from Mississauga Streetsville. But the fact of the matter is, uh, we're not asking for anything, anything difficult. In fact, most of our asks have already gone through this place. Take the two bills of, of the member for Oxford, Mr. Hardiman, and Mr. Clark, the member for Leeds Grenville. They've actually gone not just through committee and that, they've gone to the ministries. So the government has gone over them word for word. The government lawyers have gone through them. Why can't we move forward? Instead, you bring through, through this draconian, secret deal with NDP because we've shut out the talk. You didn't even try to talk to us over the last two weeks. So don't go out in the hallway, as you constantly do, because I'll be out there too, and all of us, and we'll be telling the truth. And that is, they never ask us what we want to get this thing rolling around here. Um, and we have reasonable requests. We, do, we have to go back and face our constituents too and say, what did you do this session? Well, we have some pretty good bills and some pretty reasonable requests. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, 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 you don't understand. It's traditional around here, except for these guys, that we talk about whether we're going to have committees sit in the summer. Mm -hmm. We already have one request here in my House Leader's book, a letter from, uh, uh, from what's Baz's writing's name? Uh, Scarborough, Scarborough Rouge River as chair of the General Government Committee, so Liberal chair of a committee. The Liberal chair has written to me and to Mr. Pisson, the NDP House Leader, and to the Government House Leader, to ask for four days of travel and sitting during the summer. Excellent. So there's an all-party, and, and there are many more requests coming from the other committees, who have already asked. Are there any conversations about that? No. Maybe there will be at House Leaders this, this Thursday. Uh, I hope so. The uh, fact of the matter is, uh, that's a request from 
members of all, all sides. It's not just a PC request. So that's one thing we would like to talk about. Committees have to be able to sit this summer. You can't expect us to let you away with the biggest scandal in Canadian history. You know, it amazes me, and as an aside, that, yeah, the Senate's in trouble and Rob Ford's in trouble, but the biggest scandal right here. is here. Right here. Now, it may not get the media attention every day, although I think right it will. Here. Every day. I think it will. The Privacy Commissioner, Commissioner Mrs. Ms. Kabukin, uh, Bukin, came out today and said she gave a hint her report coming forward. There's a CP story on it, and there's a Globe Mail story on it that I just read Hard to uh, about uh, senior Liberal staffers purposely, one, one being a chief of staff, destroying purposely destroying documents wow. against okay. the law. Okay. So we're not just talking about wow. sneaky He's buying uh, Liberal seats in the last election, which be, should be criminal code matters. Could but be jail time. Apparently could isn't. Be, could be jail time. We're not just talking oh, about yeah. contempt, contempt oh, of probably up to Ten ministers, including wow. Minister Wynn when she was a minister, who wow. got up in this legislature and said one of the scandals uh, was only $40 million oh. Oakville, oh. when oh. we know we're close to what, 700 million. Sounds like CDL. On that one alone, I think we're two, what are we on Oakville? Anyway, 585. It's, it's, uh, it's several times, 19 times the $40 million. Um, and yet they consistently uh, said one thing in this parliament. Now, it's interesting in this whole gas plant thing, we can't get the Premier to admit when she was told it's going to be more than $40 million. And that's key to contempt. Because if she knew, now we know she chaired the Cabinet Committee, we know she signed off on the Cabinet Minute to verify that that minute was accurate. Um, we know she would have been briefed both as chair and as a member of the Cabinet Committee that approved the Oak Bill gas plant cancellation, surely to goodness, Madam Speaker, we have cabinet ministers over there that are at least responsible enough to say during that meeting, how much is this going to cost? And surely to goodness, if they were listening to the people at the OPA, many of whom I know, they were former hydro people when I was uh, Minister of Energy, um, I know Colin Anderson would have told them the truth. I know that for a fact. He was a senior civil servant in our government and he made us through ranks up through previous governments and we relied on him to give us accurate figures when he was uh, an associate deputy minister uh, at the Ministry of Finance. He, more often than the deputy minister of finance during the Harrison Eves government, was the fellow that would brief cabinet on where we were with deficits and debts and uh, whether our spending was on track and our savings on track. So uh, I know him to be a good man. I, I felt horrible that you put him up at committee uh, the first time to lowball the figures and lowball what advice he gave and to basically when they had their press conference there, he and the chair of the OPA, uh, I felt sorry for them because they, yep. Colin Anderson is a loyal civil servant. He will do what the government tells him. Now when he finally got back with a little more freedom because you'd been caught with your pants down, everybody knew. Well, and he confirmed at the end of his testimony when he came back to the committee was that everybody knew it was more than $40 million. So if you didn't tell the truth to Parliament, including Premier Wynne when she was Minister and again Chair of the Cabinet Committee, then we still have the issue of contempt to deal with. Should we allow a Parliament to not tell the truth about factual matters? Maybe it's not this scandal, but we can't let this scandal go by. Because what about the future? As, as Mr. Hudak says, leader of the PCs, if we let you away with this, you'll do it again and again and again. And the rewarding bad behavior. It's rewarding bad behavior, as, as my colleague says. So we need, my point in all that was, we need committees to sit in the summer. I know the NDP would agree with that, but the track we're on, you rascals are going to take off or try and take off with the help of the NDP, close this place down. And, uh, and we'll have no orange committee, no gas plant committees. Um, we have a very serious issue that they're dealing with downstairs in the committee rooms uh, on the uh, pharmaceutical cancer drugs issue. Um, we'd like to have a committee on developmental services. Um, we still haven't got to the bottom of e-health. Uh, that's still coming around. We know the auditor's going to bring forward another report 
on the gas plants, this time dealing with the true cost of Oakville. So there's lots of the people's work to be done. And through this programming motion, you're trying to squirm out of all of that. And if we have to sit here and say to the cows, come home, that's what we'll do, I guess. Uh, it's the only tool we have, it's a legitimate tool. We've tried our want of confidence motion. Now, one of the things I'd like to discuss, Madam Chair, is we think with all these scandals and that, a confident government would have the confidence of the House. And in fact, the tradition in a minority is that it does get tested from time to time. Sure, majority governments will allow opposition to have their want of confidence motions because they, uh, they know what the outcome is ahead of time. But it's also a tradition from time to time in a minority to test that. We tried to do that with my motion uh, earlier this month. Great. We tried to do that in, I thought, a rather interesting way, in a way that probably set some precedent, although I'm not sure I'd have to defer to the table, uh, in terms of Mr. Clark's Opposition Day motion to um, order the three House leaders to set a date for the debate and vote on the want of confidence motion. And of course, the want of confidence motions for those at home uh, deals with the gas plant scandal primarily and says that because of all these scandals, um, we don't think the government is ruling legitimately. We don't think it has the legitimate support of the people of Ontario. So we can test that through an election, if you like, or we can do it here in the House for the Want of Confidence motion. So in a few minutes, uh, Madam Speaker, I will be moving an amendment uh, to this uh, programming motion that will ask the uh, government to and, and, uh, and the uh, third party uh, to bring back uh, our Want of Confidence motion and to include it as pa part of, uh, of this motion. Um, Madam Speaker, I just want to mention a couple of other people. Uh, in terms of uh, the conversation I'd also like to have. We have a former, and it goes back to gas plants again, but we have a former Minister Bentley, clearly under oath to cover up a massive scandal and withhold documents ordered by a committee of this legislature. We can't let this pass. This is a court of law when it decides to act as a court of law. You did that in front of a judge. The judge, if she has said to you, you need to produce documents, you need to produce a person, you need to produce things, and you say, the heck with you, Your Honour. Well, I think Her Honour would say, there's the jail cell officer, take this, take this plaintiff take to jail. Um, no, we're not suggesting Mr. Bentley should go to jail, but maybe some of you other people should. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, there'll be one, one, bit of, one big political jail cell for the whole heck of you. I uh, would ask that the conversation go through the chair. Continue. Uh, but, you know, I don't think it'll come to that. But the fact of the matter is, we need committees. We need the committees to keep to do their work and get to the bottom of it. The Premier has <coughs> said time and time again she wants to get to the bottom of it. Uh, but, again, actions speak louder than words. Um, she's not a new government. She acts the same way as the old government. And they say one thing, sounds great, gets reported in the Toronto Star mainly. And, uh, and then when we actually have House leaders, none of these things are talked about. I bring them up. Mr. Busson brings some of this stuff up as uh, House leader for the NDP. And, uh, and it just, just, just doesn't get done. Uh, we want to have a conversation, Madam Speaker, about uh, Bob Delaney comparing the, or the member from Mississauga Streetsville comparing the gas plant scandal to the cost of the American moon landing. I mean, he just threw the dice, I guess, when you made this horrendous decision and didn't bother to figure out what the cost was and said, we will save our political seats regardless of the cost. I mean, clearly it was two weeks left in the, uh, in the last election, 2011 election. They obviously saw the same polls that everybody else saw and that were reported widely in the media that they were headed towards either a loss or a very uh, or a clear, or a clear minority, not even a slim majority. So uh, they had to buy some seats. And we cannot allow any political party to buy seats in the election. And that's plain and simple what it is. And you knew you were doing things wrong because you knew the government can't spend large amounts of money. Civil service won't allow cabinet to do that during an election. 
So you announced the cancellation of Oakville on Liberal Party letterhead to get to skirt the rules. To skirt the rules. And we could see it at the time what you were doing. You uh, were going to spend an awful pile of money, although I don't know if everybody knew it was going to be this amount of money. And, uh, and you were doing it in the sneakiest way possible. You have to be held accountable for that. The, um, so as House Leader, uh, Madam Speaker, I'm not prepared. We're not prepared. I speak on behalf of all of our caucus and Tim Hudak, our leader to let another week of myths, truths and political interference go by. Premier Wen says that the budget motion is the only test of confidence the House needs. Well, she's wrong, and frankly, she's wrong to have even the audacity to say that that's the only want of confidence we need and the only one we're going to have. How unparliamentary and disrespectful of the rules. A very legitimate tool in our toolbox that is used by parties in both minority and majority situations parliaments in those situations is the uh, want of confidence test, and we demand that we have that want of confidence test. But again, it will be part of a conversation that we would like to have with the government. And we don't want to have it through the media, although if that's the way they want to do it, I'm as good at it as anybody else, and so is every member of my caucus, our caucus. The fact of the matter is, we, uh, we don't have to go to the wall as parties. We can make this thing work. Um, I've given you just about 99% of our list that I can think of. I have kind of had to make up notes rather quickly in the last few hours. Um, and, uh, and we're willing to talk about whatever you want to talk about. But the fact of the matter is we're not going to support uh, this uh, programming motion that was done in secret and behind our backs, nor should we be expected to support this motion. I think that's fair. And uh, again, We'll have all the conversations you want. We don't have to stay here all summer. If you want to stay here all summer, we'll stay here all summer, even if it's just me and a few good colleagues. We'll be here. Stuck here all summer. We'll be here. And the clerk. <laughs> and the clerk. Yeah. I think overtime for the clerk at that point, and her, and her fellow elves. Um, <laughs> so, uh, in my last uh, two minutes, uh, Madam Speaker, I move the programming motion be amended by adding the following adding a new section entitled Section D, Want of Confidence, and that the new section include the following sentence, that the Want of Confidence motion standing in the name of the member from Simcoe Gray shall be called for debate and a vote no later than June 6, 2013.